Yeah. That's great. Um, what do you think about the internet uh, MySpace revolution uh, from one point of your of the band, the Toasters, and from one point as a, a label owner? Well, it's interesting. I mean, MySpace is a little bit of a touchstone, but it's it's kind of it's a natural evolution of what's been happening on the internet for a while. And uh, I've always said that. I mean. Rupert Murdoch, who bought MySpace, is not a stupid guy. And one of the things that he um, envisioned when he bought it was that MySpace would replace record labels as the interface between consumers and bands. And, and he's been right. And it's actually launched last week of MySpace Music, where now bands can actually put a, a music player on their site and sell directly to fans. So uh, he's a very smart guy. And, and when he. When he uh, accedes to a company like that and takes it over, you have to really have to listen. I mean, a lot of people don't like him, but he's a very smart guy. And and really, I think at the moment, it's it's the internet affords bands a, an ideal opportunity to 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 interact directly with their fans. And and uh, what MySpace has done, whether you like it or not, is really supplant the traditional record label. So. Going forward, I see a very, very hard time for record labels. Okay, and uh, coming uh, again to the toasters, and there are so many band members w uh, which uh, played, featured in uh, with the toasters. And uh, is there a toasters family around? Have you still contact to them, or um, yeah, can you tell us something about it? Yeah, we have an extended family. I mean, on on this tour. Uh, I've got Mike, uh, who's been playing with me for 12 years, who comes in and out. But the thing is, is that now, because uh, as a band, we, the only way we can make money is to play live. You can't make money off CD sales anymore. That's all finished. So it's all about the live show. And people with families and people with kids and people with jobs can't make 200 shows a year. Only me, because I'm out of my mind. So who can make it makes it. It's a Mission Impossible crew. But once you're in the toasters, you never end. And uh, it's more important to play as many shows as possible. And who comes out, comes out. So you'll see the same core of people and with old faces coming in, back in and out. So who who can come, can come. And how, how do you do it um, when there are some mem band members who... Are I think uh, their decision is uh, to go for the family or uh, something and don't go for the music. How do you decide about the band members who come in and go out? In terms of choosing who yeah. comes? Well, we have, we're lucky because we have, being from New York, we have a very long list of people who we know and friends and uh, collaborators and guys in other bands that we play with. So it's always able to... We've never been... We never had to turn down a show because we can't find people to play. We just say, you know, okay, if trombone guy number one can't play because he's married or his girlfriend's mad or he just had a kid or he lost his job or whatever, then we use trombone player number two or number three or number four or number five. Yeah. We have a lot of substitutes. Oh, that's great. So there is a real Toastmas family. It's like a football team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, we have American football or uh, soccer? We have more substitutes than Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's great that you say that. Because I'm interested in uh, where do you come from originally? You always say it's in New York. Uh, but I know that you came from uh, England, uh, from, Br from, from Britain. And, uh, great Britain, it's called. Yeah. English people are those rude people who live up in London and up there. Where I come from is Devonshire, which is down in the West Country, which is the ancient uh, British Celtic people, Celtic, Celtic culture. And uh, I lived down there. I moved to New York in 1980. So I lived in New York for 25 years before moving to Spain. But originally I'm from Britain, yeah. But that was a time when ska really uh, got a second wave, as we call it, the second wave of ska. And, uh, but you left the country when the specials came and the madness and all, all the selector and all the, uh, had a big success and you left uh, for New York. So uh, how, how, uh, why, why does it happen? Well, I left uh, 
I went to work in America for a company I was working for that was in comic books and science fiction. That was in 1980. And at that point, I'd have to say that in 1980, two-tone was already in decline. I'd, I'd say the peak year for two-tone was 1979, really. And after that, it was already started to slide. But, um, you know, I was, I was into that music, and we started a scam band in New York. And a lot of people say, you know, what, what is your position in the Sky universe? And I think the toasters are the missing link between two-tone and, and then what happened afterwards. Okay, last question. Um, you're touring America, so I have, I have to ask, uh, how is the audience and how, are there any skinheads, are there any mods in America? Yeah, there are, not all over. I mean, it's, it's a different audience. I mean, a lot of people are younger. The skinhead culture in, in the USA is like mostly older people, but it's a mixed batch. I mean, we get a lot more skater kids and a lot more punk rock kids coming on because that's their, that's their point of entry. Everybody, everybody has a portal where they get into sky music. And in the States, it tends to be younger kids who have come in through alternative sources like emo or punk or hard or whatever. But I think everybody can uh, find something in ska music they like, whether it's jazz or reggae or ska or rock or punk rock. There's something in there for everybody, and hopefully that's what the toasters dish up. So uh, you're in a teaching role of the young guys, because I heard uh, some reggae tunes tonight, and uh, yeah, you're playing them in America as well. Yeah, yeah, we mix it up. A little bit of everything from the toasters. Because okay. you just can't, uh, you just can't forget your roots, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's a great last word, and uh, I have to thank you. I hope that was the right question <laughs> to you, Mr. Yeah, Thank you very much for the evening and for the interview. Yeah.